Hey, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. We're here with a Corrupted Gauntlet guide today, and we'll be going over some of the requirements, monsters, demi-bosses, the boss, the loot, and we'll have a full run at the end so you can see how I go about my CG runs. So let's get into it. First things first, let's go over some requirements. To be able to do the Corrupted Gauntlet, you will want to have around 85 in attack, strength, defense, and magic. 70 or higher in prayer, the higher the better with most stat requirements, and you'll see why shortly. You will also need to have the quest Song of the Elves completed to access Prif and the Gauntlet in the first place. The skilling requirements are going to be 70 construction, farming, mining, herb lore, smithing, and woodcutting, which are required to complete the quest in the first place and are fine to start with, but higher levels and skills are recommended as it will increase your gathering speed. If for some reason you didn't know already, in the gauntlet you need to create everything yourself. You can't bring anything in with you, and you'll start with a scepter, pickaxe, woodcutting axe, pestle and mortar, harpoon, and a teleport crystal. You will need to collect, catch, craft, and cook all of your armor, weapons, potions, and food within the time limit. In CG, you have 7.5 minutes as opposed to regular gauntlets, 10 minutes to prep. After the time expires, you will be teleported to the boss room, regardless of whether you're ready for the boss or not. The gauntlet is made up of 49 rooms, all of which are randomly generated when you enter, so each room will be a little bit different, but a few things stay the same. For example, the boss room is always in the middle. The demi-bosses only have a chance to spawn in the three middle rooms on each wall, and your starting room will always be touching the boss room. You will need to get three ore, three bark, and three wool to be able to craft your tier one armor, made up of the helmet, body, and legs as well as 120 crystal shards you will find throughout these rooms, as well as Grimleaf which you will need to make potions. Weapon frames and crystal shards are dropped from all of the monsters in the gauntlet. A weapon frame will always drop off of the third weaker monster or first stronger monster you fight in the gauntlet, unless you've already had one drop before then, and they will always drop off of demi bosses. To make a weapon, you will first need to find a weapon frame and 20 crystal shards for your tier 1, 60 crystal shards to upgrade it to tier 2, and a spike, orb, or bowstring to upgrade it to tier 3. The spike, orb, and bowstring are only dropped off of the demi-bosses. You will also find fishing spots throughout the rooms. You will need 26 fish, which will give you one extra to heal up to full before starting the boss. Each paddlefish will heal you for 20 HP. You will usually only need two potions, but I like to make three, so you will need to make two to three vials for 10 crystal shards each, then fill them with water, add your grim leaf, then you will need to add two to three crushed shards depending on how many potions you're making, by using your pestle and mortar on your shard stack. This will make an igneal potion, which restores your prayer based on your prayer level, 40% run energy, and acts as a stamina. The restoration brackets are on screen now if you want to pause and check it out. Weaker monsters you'll encounter in the gauntlet are bats with a max hit of 11, rats with a max hit of 14, and spiders with a max hit of about 10. The first three you kill will guarantee a weapon frame if you haven't already received one. They will drop crystal shards and have a chance at dropping fish and grim leaves as well. Next up are the stronger monsters. The scorpion with a max hit of 17 that has the lowest defense out of all three of the stronger monsters. The wolf with a max hit of 19 with the second lowest defense. And the unicorn with a max hit of about 17 which has the highest defense out of all of the stronger monsters. All of the weaker and stronger monsters will attack with melee. For the demi-bosses, we have a bear with a max hit of 48 that attacks with melee and will drop the spike for the halberd. The dark beast with a max hit of 48 that attacks with range and will drop the bowstring for the bow. And the dragon with a max hit of 48 as well that attacks with magic and will drop the orb for the staff. The hunlift is the final boss of the corrupted gauntlet with a thousand health, a five tick attack cycle, a max hit of 68, and will attack with all styles of combat, switching between ranged and mage every four attacks and will only melee you if you're standing under it for more than a tick, and it will change its prayer every six off prayer attacks that you do. If you do get meleeed by the Hunlith, it does not count for an attack turn. If the Hunlith is attacking with mage, it will occasionally send out a prayer disabling attack that is pink and looks different than a normal mage attack. Make sure you prioritize moving first if you need to, then getting your protection prayer up, then your offensive prayer, and then attacking again. During the fight, the floor will light up in different patterns. You will need to be off of the tiles before they change from red to orange where you will take rapid damage between 10 and 20 every tick. The tiles I have marked are going to have a better chance of not having the floor tiles light up under you during the last phase, depending on where the Hunlift is positioned. You ideally want it to be one tile away from both walls in any corner, or two tiles away from one wall, and one tile away from the other. Now this isn't to say if you stand on these tiles they will never light up under you, but they do have a better chance of not lighting up so you can stay still and keep DPSing. The Hunlift will also stomp and summon tornadoes. Starting with just a few, 
but increasing as it takes more damage. The tornadoes will try to converge on your tile, so you'll need to run to avoid them. You are able to step over them and Wooks walk over them if you feel brave enough to do that, if they are on the tile adjacent to you, as when you run, you move two tiles at once. But if you mess up the timing, you will take a lot of damage. With full tier one armor, you will take 15 to 25 damage per tornado per tick that they are on the same tile as you. The loot for a completed CG run will be five to nine crystal shards every time, a one in 50 chance for both the regular weapon crystal seed for either a crystal bow, shield, or halberd, and the crystal armor seed. A one out of 400 chance at the enhanced crystal weapon seed for either the bofa or the blade, and a one out of 800 chance at Youngliff, the pet. And now let's take a look at a full corrupted gauntlet run. Make sure you check it out so you can get some tips that I may have not gone over before this. So first thing we're going to do is run out of the starting room in one of the two doors that's going to make it to where you're able to run a full lap around the room. Start collecting some resources, put on protect from melee, and organize our inventory real quick. So we have all of the resources we need for our armor in this room, so we'll be able to drop our pickaxe and our woodcutting axe after we get those. And we got some fish here, so we'll spam click on the fishing spot to fish a little bit faster. Since I'm not using the plugin to track my resources, I'll just subtract the four fish I have from the 26 I know I need, which means I'll need 22 more. Type that in my chat box and keep subtracting from it as we go so I don't lose track. Then we'll go check for a demi boss over here. You want to make sure that you are going away from the room that the Hun lives in when you're taking your first trip out. And there's no demi boss there, but you want to make sure you're opening it parallel with the wall so that way there is no line of sight in case there is a dragon or a uh, dark beast in there. That way you don't take a 48 to the face out of nowhere. You want to make sure before you get back to the starting room for the first time that you have at least 260 crystal shards all of your bark, wool, and ore, some food, and at least one weapon frame. That way you're able to make pretty much everything you need for the run and the first trip back. Having at least one of the stronger monsters killed during the first trip out will be a nice boost to your shard stack as they're going to drop more shards than uh, any of the smaller monsters will. And since we have a scorpion here that has less defense than the wolf, we'll just go ahead and take this one out real fast. And I need to drop one of those so I can get that weapon frame. So now we can just head back to the starting room. We'll make our tier two bow, tier one armor, and three vials for our potions. We'll head over to the uh, water pump to fill them up, equip all of our armor and our weapon on the way make our unfinished potion, cook our food so we can drop it. Then we'll update our count once it's all on the floor and I can see how many I have. Which looks like about 12. 13, so I need 13 more. Come back this way to get those Grimleaf and some more fish that are on the floor over there. Got another teleport seed, which we won't need unless we get very unlucky on the rest of the run. Make our unfinished potions, and we'll go pick up those fish and crush some shards on the way there. Drop our pestle and mortar. Protect from melee so we don't take a bunch of damage from the wolf, and we'll just run north since we've already explored all of the rooms that the demi bosses could be in here. Some more fish on the way. Puts us down to nine more that we need. 
So it's three more fishing spots since there's only four fish in each spot. All right, and then we will finish our potions as we run over to the next door. Check the map here. And we'll decant the potions as we run. So we got a Dark Beast here, we'll wait for the Unicorn to attack, switch to Protect Range, get on the other side of that, decant our other potion, and start flicking Rigor. Bowstring, some more shards, and we'll take that weapon frame too. Okay, so we got a bear in here. Take these fish here and probably head southeast to try to get to the other wall and look for some more demi bosses. So I only need five more. I've got plenty of fishing spots in here, so we'll just pick those up real quick. That's all the fish we need so we can drop our harpoon. There's a dragon there so we can get our orb. Still got a minute and 40 left, so we are pretty good on time. But you always have to remember you still have to go back to the base, craft your armor, craft your weapons, cook the rest of your food, pick up all your other food. So you don't want to leave yourself with uh, not enough time to finish everything. Head over here, make our tier 3 bow, tier 3 staff, drop our shard stack once we're done. Then we can drink our extra Agneal dose. Cook our food. Pick up the rest of the food that we have on the floor. And now we're all ready. So the Humleth is always going to attack with range, so we'll throw on Protect from range and we'll run in while it's in the corner since that'll pull it one tile away from both walls, which is going to be an ideal place for it to be since we'll have a space to run around the back of it in case we get trapped from the floor in the tornadoes. One tile away from both walls is ideal, but one tile away from one wall and two tiles away from the other wall is also uh, is also going to work out well for you. It'll just leave the most amount of space uh, to run away from everything if it's just the one tile away from both. And you are able to move it around, but moving the Hunleth is kind of dangerous. You take a lot of damage from the stomp, so it's better not to unless you absolutely have to. That is the prayer disabling attack, so we will make sure we move first if there's floor under us we need to avoid. Then get our protection prayer up, our offensive prayer up, and then start attacking again. There's the switch to range with those little spiky things around the Hunleth. Every four attacks it's going to change, so you got to make sure you're paying attention to that. And then every six uh, off prayer attacks you do to the Hunleth, it'll change its uh, protection prayer. And then that glowing orb around the Hunleth there, that was to indicate it's switching back to magic attacks. then in the beginning of the run, you do want to stay closer to these yellow tiles. It'll have a lower chance of having the floor change under you. Just kind of depending on which part of the room you're in and where the Hunlip is. At the very least, you'll have a very short run to safety. Once we get down to about 30% or so, we're going to want to move up to the red tiles as much as we can. And you want to make sure you're not overeating as well. Every time you eat, that's going to lower your DPS. 
so you want to make sure you are eating uh, when you're running away from tornadoes for the most part. Don't let yourself die trying to keep your DPS high, but you definitely don't want to be overeating all the time. That's kind of unfortunate that I moved him, but that'll also make it to where I'm able to show you guys what it should look like the other way with the one tile and two tile. Just like that. Once I get around 50 health or so, I usually try to eat up at least one fish. Unless I know I'm about to take a lot of damage because I'm not going to be able to get away from something, then I will try to eat up a little bit more. That was very close. I think I had like four health left. And that's all there is to it. Let's see if we're lucky. Nope, never lucky. But that's where we're going to call it a guide. If you enjoyed this video or learned something from it, feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah.